So in this video I want to talk about member checking as a strategy that will help increase the quality of your qualitative study. And by quality what I mean in particular is its validity. Because member checking reduces, as I will explain later, uh, researcher bias, respondent bias and reactivity. So essentially it increases validity of your study. So essentially member checking is asking your participants to uh, test or comment on or evaluate some findings from your study. And it may take several forms depending on uh, how detailed you want this feedback to be and also at which stage you're asking your participants to do that uh, member checking. In its most basic form, and uh, this is something I do uh, quite a lot is just uh, asking as you're going through interview transcripts uh, and you come across something that you're either not clear about or you would like your participants to elaborate on but you did not uh, ask your participants to elaborate on this topic during the interview then you just send a, a specific question to your participant so uh, so basically you're just sending them an email or message or or calling or texting them uh, and saying, uh, look, I came across this uh, piece here or this statement here and uh, I wasn't sure what you mean, so could you please uh, clarify what you mean by this? Or, or perhaps uh, saying, uh, look, you started this topic here but I didn't ask you to elaborate, so could you please develop this thought a little bit further? So, uh, as I said, this uh, I do this a lot and this will happen a lot to you. Uh, so it's always a good idea to uh, ask your participants uh, during the interview or after the interview uh, whether it would be okay if you contact them uh, if there is anything that you are not clear about. And as I said, this will happen quite often. So uh, in my case, when I uh, go through my interview transcripts, for example, this happens a lot. So uh, I'm reading something and then the participant uh, actually starts to develop an interesting thought and then instead of following up on this thought I just kind of change the topic so and uh, as I'm doing my transcripts I usually I can't believe that I did it I can't believe that uh, I ignored this uh, potentially interesting topic but this is understandable because during the interview you of course have uh, hundreds of things on your mind so you're trying to listen to your participant and, and be responsive to what he or she says and you're thinking about the following questions and maybe you're making a note to yourself to uh, ask about something that the participant just said and did not continue but you don't want to interrupt so you have to remember to ask about this uh, later. So basically you have so many things on your mind uh, and also another reason is that simply during the interview you don't always know what will be important or interesting. But then as you transcribe and as you start your data analysis, uh, you're developing this uh, picture of what's important and what's interesting. So, so that's another reason. So you simply didn't know that, that you will need your participant to clarify. Another form of member checking is asking your participants to uh, review the whole interview transcript. So uh, after you have uh, completed uh, transcribing the interviews you're sending your participants uh, the interview transcript and uh, just asking them to uh, review, uh, review them and maybe add something or maybe change or remove something which as I will say uh, soon uh, is actually a, ris a risky thing to do. Uh, but that's what uh, member checking involves in this situation. So just sending the whole transcript to your interviewee. Then another form, and uh, this also happens at another stage, is uh, when you ask your participants to verify or uh, validate uh, your actual interpretations or your conclusions. So uh, this happens at the stage of data analysis and you're doing your uh, your analysis and you're interpreting uh, what they said and you're coming obviously to certain conclusions. So uh, so in this form of member checking you're actually sending these uh, conclusions or ideas or results essentially to your participants and you're 
also asking them to review them and uh, perhaps comment on, on these uh, conclusions and provide their insights. And again, as I will say uh, in this video, uh, this can be a, a risky thing. So this can have certain disadvantages. And finally, uh, another form of member checking is uh, actually a second interview, a follow-up interview, which sometimes is called a member checking interview. So uh, when, based on your findings, on your data analysis, uh, you're deciding to conduct a follow-up interview that will be based on these findings, what you are doing is member checking because uh, you are the reason you are conducting the second interview is because you want to validate these findings and you want to uh, double check and confirm certain things that emerge in your data analysis in your analysis of uh, interview one. As I said at the beginning, member checking may increase uh, validity of your study. And uh, this happens because it may reduce uh, several threats to validity. So it may uh, reduce respondent bias, researcher bias and reactivity. As I explained in uh, previous videos, respondent bias is uh, refers to a situation when uh, the participant uh, just doesn't tell you the whole truth for any reason. Uh, researcher bias is the influence of uh, your previous knowledge on, uh, for example, finding uh, findings or interpretations that you make. So you can imagine that uh, when you ask the participants to mm, clarify something, especially your interpretations or conclusions, this reduces these, uh, this uh, researcher bias because in this situation it's not just uh, what you're describing is not just based on your assumptions but rather has been confirmed by, uh, by your participants. And reactivity uh, refers to the influence of you as a person, as a researcher, on this situation. So the fact that you are there and you're asking your participants questions may, for example, result in them uh, giving you answers that they think you want to hear. So, And this happens in this uh, dynamic interview situation. So if afterwards, after the interview, you're actually sending them the transcripts and uh, without your influence, without your physical presence at least, they have a chance to review these transcripts. This, uh, again, uh, may uh, reduce uh, this uh, threat, this uh, reactivity. But member checking, as I said before, may also have a, a negative side. So uh, there are certain risks and certain disadvantages related to member checking. As I said before, uh, I would personally be quite reluctant to uh, sent my participants the actual uh, results or you know conclusions and interpretations so so the actual findings of the study I would be worried and reluctant uh, to do so because uh, for many reason uh, many reasons basically I would just be worried that they may simply change their mind so it's not uh, in this case it's not really validating and member checking but they may, uh, for some reason, decide, for example, that what they said didn't sound right or, you know, it, uh, it put them in a negative light in their opinion or just any other reason. So, so this may result actually in them giving you responses which uh, are not honest because they decided, they changed their mind, they decided that this is not uh, how they want to be uh, perceived or maybe they are simply overwhelmed when they look at uh, these important conclusions you know and findings and claims and they realize that this comes from uh, partially from what they said they again they may just simply uh, decide to distance themselves from what they said and i feel the same about uh, letting your participants uh, remove and delete uh, things from your transcripts for the same uh, for the exact same reason so uh, while I do uh, quite often uh, perform this uh, member checking technique on the level that I mentioned. So uh, I actually uh, write to my participants and just ask them to clarify little things that I do not understand or, uh, or to develop a certain topic, especially if this uh, emerges in my data analysis as something important. Uh, so I do uh, quite often uh, apply this technique in this situation. I uh, personally probably wouldn't have uh, enough courage to send them the whole findings and ask them to 
remove things and comment on these things because uh, not just because I'm afraid that uh, something I have worked on so hard may need to be changed but simply because I do believe as I said that this may actually result in your participants not giving you uh, real and honest responses. So this will be up to you whether you want to apply member checking in your study. I think that to some extent in some basic form is very useful uh, and uh, most importantly is just needed. It's needed to ensure that uh, the findings of your study are valid.